we're back at the Duffers Park, home of the Howard Fife, and um, basically where it all started for me. Back in primary three, came along and played uh, as a kid all the way till uh, under 18s and then the first team eventually. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool to be back. Still know a lot of people down at the club, obviously my older brother played here, Chris Rosaro, both played for Glasgow and Scotland. And yeah, it was basically my childhood growing up down here on Saturdays watching the first team and then on Sundays playing myself so it'll be cool to get back and see what's happening. It's such a good wee club, like proper community club. Um, yeah, the town gets behind the team and stuff so it's a cool place to be. How are you doing? Uh, yeah. Nice to see you, how are you Eddie? Good, you well? yeah. Alan, how are you? you well? I'm well, <laughs> to see you. Yeah, Thanks for coming down. You. Chris, how are you? Very well, good. Right. Yeah. I knew you'd get in for the camera, eh? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what he's talking about. Get, go and get training. You Hi. need one good look. <laughs> I've managed to finally bring down a shirt from one of my cap games to, to add to the wall of fame. We've got oh, Dave Rollo up there, British and Irish line, Pete and Fuzzy obviously, and, and like some Michael Fido who plays Scotland Seven, so it'd be pretty cool to, to join them. Oh, there it is as well. Oh, Pete's got two strips up. Oh, what a greedy thing, eh? <laughs> yeah, he's got it twice. It is cool, so like I said, the old clubhouse. Um, up the Provost Wind, all these were all hung up as well. And then obviously when they moved to this facility, they've brought all the stuff with us and put it up. So um, yeah, it's cool to see, obviously, I grew up watching him play. So yeah, it'll be quite nice to find a space somewhere. My shirt will only be small, so we'll fit it in. I think George puts on, put an awful lot on himself. He had a high commitment rate and he wanted to do things right from an early age. So yes, was that peer pressure from brother and dad. I think it was more peer pressure on himself. Uh, Gary and Peter just wanted them to do well and he's done really well. <laughs> yep, there we go. Thank you very I'm much. sorry I've not framed it but I'm sure you'll manage. Okay. Thanks again, Thank I appreciate much. it. Thanks for coming, that's yeah, yeah. a pretty yeah. cool moment to go from. We didn't have to twist his arm. <laughs> <laughs> George, back at the Howe Five where it all started. How does it feel to be back here? Yeah, it's cool. The sun's shining, as it always used to be. Um, yeah, it's nice, you know. We come from a small town, fairly small club and things, and um, I'm proud to be from here. And like you say, these guys, you could see how much it meant to them, um, you know, presenting the strip and things. And yeah, being able to make these guys who do so much for this club and for me when I was younger, it's, it's just really cool, special feeling. So we're here where you first picked up a rugby ball. Talk us through your sort of first memories of here. Well, I was, like I am now, the smallest out of everyone back in primary three. I think there was about 10 of us at the start. Um, we played on this, this is the seconds pitch. Um, we'd come down here Sundays, I think it was 10 till 12, and just would just run mad. Not much rugby involved, but it was just what we all loved to do. And basically that same group of 10, a few more, uh, boys added on later and that same group went from primary three all the way up till under 18s and even the senior team so it's kind of the way it seems to work here these small clubs um, like such a cool wee community we've got a lot of farmers a lot of people live in the local town um, and yeah you go up through all the grades together and then play play for the first team hopefully so yeah it's, it's cool to be back what were you like as a young person compared to what you're like now because he's just described you as being headstrong. Yeah, I don't think I've changed too much. I was probably, headstrong's putting it nice. I was competitive, um, probably irritating. Uh, just wanted to win. Even when I was a wee kid, I wanted to win everything. So I probably rubbed the coaches and some of the boys up the wrong way. But I think they knew it was all in, for, in, in good grace. So yeah, I, think, I don't think I've changed too much now. I still have to punch above my weight as a wee guy. And yeah, just try and give my all all the time really, so that's that's me. And we've just met your former coach, your first coach, Eddie Burgess. Yeah. How influential was he? He was great, you know, it was not an easy task trying to coach a rabble of P3s all the way through to under 16, so he had the patience of a saint. And to see him still down wearing his club tie, and you know, after, what's that, that'll have been 22 years now, um, that just shows you what kind of club it is. People stay here for life and things, so. Yeah, he was, he was such a good guy, had so much time for us as wee ones and um, obviously did a not bad job because myself, Cameron Fenton, who played for Glasgow and Edinburgh, we were in the same group um, and then Jamie joined a bit later, so uh, there's, a, there's a few boys that have done not bad. And of course this is where it started for your brother as well, 
um, how big an influence has he been? Yeah, massive, you know. Like you say, he was he was my hero growing up, and even when he moved on to play for for Glasgow in Scotland, watching him, that's all I wanted to do was just join him and first of all play for Glasgow together, and then we were lucky enough to play for Scotland. But he kind of, I think not just me, all the boys that have played with him will say how like popular a figure he was among the squad, how much of a leader he was, and just kind of set the example of what it was to be a professional rugby player. So yeah, having him as a role model growing up, I was I was very lucky. Um, is it strange that he's your coach now? A lot of people ask me that, but not really, to be honest, because he's always been like the kind of father figure amongst the squad, in a way. He's obviously had a, so much experience of playing. Um, he did a lot of coaching as well towards his, the end of his career. Um, so, nah, it kind of just feels natural. He's got so much energy. Um, he's always so positive with the boys and it's really infectious. I'm biased because he's my brother, but I think he's, he's doing a really good job, so hopefully it'll, it'll be a long and successful career for him as well. Another sort of key member of the, the, coach, the Scotland set up right now that you've met here or you've been involved with here is Jamie Ritchie. Um, tell us a bit about your relationship with him and how you first met. So, God, we go way back, me and Jamie. We, I think we first met a tennis coach and my mum was a tennis coach. And him, his mum and my mum were, were friends and he came along to the tennis. And yeah, kind of just hit it off then. Kind of probably disappeared for a bit because he would lived in St Andrews, played for Madras, which is basically the rivals of the Howe here. Um, and then we met again at Strath Island School and yeah, we've been really close ever since. Um, he, he ended up coming to the house, saw the light, coming to play for us and we played our first senior games together. So. Um, yeah, like I say, I've mentioned Cammy Fenton as well before. The three of us kind of came all the way through the, the age grades together here and then with Scotland as well. So he's, um, yeah, he's a good friend. You were young when you played for the first team here, were you not? Yeah, so I was in my last year at school. Jamie would have been in his second last year at school. So I was fairly nervous that morning. I wasn't meant, I think I was meant to be on the bench and my dad was the coach at the time and someone called off injured or ill in the morning. And we're on our way to the game, and he just said, "Oh, you're starting, by the way." And I said, "What?" Um, so I was bricking it, running out. <laughs> but luckily, we got a good result. I think we played against Musselburgh at home. Um, but yeah, the boys took care of me out there. There was a lot of older guys that had seen me grow up, so they looked after me. How's the preparation been going for the World Cup so far? It's been great. We had a great first block. Um, two weeks in, well three weeks for the, the Edinburgh boys, two weeks for us, and then a week in uh, Nice. It was it was tough work, boys worked hard. Uh, a few tired and sore bodies by the end of the third week, but we've got such a good squad now. Like, we kind of, we know each other well, we get on off the field, and that translates on the pitch, everyone just gets on with it. There's no bickering, we just, yeah, we just work hard, and, and, and yeah, like I say, get on with it and try and, try and make ourselves better. Confidence seems to be pretty high in the squad right now. Obviously, after some of the wins we've had, that win against England at Twickenham, you were heavily involved in at the end of it. What was that like? That was, yeah, one of the best feelings on a rugby pitch, definitely. That was my first Calcutta Cup uh, away at Twickenham. And yeah, coming on for the last kind of 10, 15 minutes. And, and obviously, we scored that pretty special try, Duhan, with one of his wonder finishes in the corner and then held them out at the end so we all went mad at the end it was just it's just one of those moments to dream of as a kid and for it to come come true in the end yeah it was it was such a good day I had, had my family done watching and stuff so yeah it was amazing when you look at that clip when the final whistle goes and we've won and two people that are central to that is you and Jamie Ritchie and obviously it started here yeah well I don't know if I was central to it I was in there shouting at the ref for a penalty he won the penalty but uh, yeah, no, it is cool, like you say, for such a small club, we probably punch above our weight in terms of, um, you know, players that have turned professional. So, yeah, to be able to do it for Scotland and then also in, in a strange sort of way do it for, for the Howe of Fife as well. Is, yeah, I think it's definitely something I, I pride myself on. It's my, my fitness and my speed to the breakdown. Um, when you've got guys like Finn Russell and Duan van der Merwe, Kyle Stein, Outside you, Sione and Hugh, our whole back line, you just want to give them the ball early. So the Nines job primarily is just to get it to the ruck and fling it out to them and let them work their magic. So it seemed to work that day. In terms of the, the World Cup itself, 
what your thoughts ahead of it? Obviously, we've been involved in one before. Any learnings from that? Yeah, it was maybe a bit different this time. I obviously went into the last one as a real youngster. Um, obviously, I had Greg and Ali um, as nine, so I was looking to just try and soak up everything I could. Um, play as much as I could. I ended up getting a bit of game time and stuff, so the experience was incredible, but the results and the performances weren't where they needed to be, so this time, like we're focused, we want to we want to go as far as we can and we, we want to win games, so we know we got to work hard in training and then and translate that onto the pitch, so I think, yeah, we're all just focused on, on doing, doing our best.